Okay guys, uh, I want to show you about the spray booth I built today. Um, you've probably seen the one on the web. Um, I believe it was Michael Dresner who built it out of cardboard, a uh, folding spray booth out of cardboard, and I really like that idea. My wife had bought me a um, Earl X 6900, but I haven't been using a lot because um, I don't have a proper spray set up in the garage. So anyway, what you're looking at now is a mock-up of what it's going to what it's going to look like when it's done. So um, if you look close, you can see that this is actually made of just four panels. Um, this is just a little mock-up. This isn't the real spray booth. Um, and they're basically taped together so that they can fold up nicely. You kind of see how that folds up. There's a little offset piece in there so that when, the, when it's folded up, the panels will lay flat. Um, and then you can open it. Okay, so this is the mock-up. It's gonna be something like that. And it's really important for me though that I can, uh, that this thing's light so I can move it around by myself when it's done and that it is um, portable, I can fold it up, I can put it away, whatever. Um, so four panels like this and then it folds up nicely. So let me tell you about how much this thing costs because I want it cheap too. Here is the uh, Home Depot receipt. And I spent 141 bucks on this. Now that doesn't include some plywood and it doesn't include some gaffer's tape. This is the gaffer's tape I used. This is some strong stuff. I actually got this from the um, guys who run all the conference rooms at work. They just gave me this piece of gaffer's tape. I really wish I could have got wide, like eight inch wide gaffer's tape, but I couldn't find it. So instead, what I used was, uh, at Home Depot you can get this stuff. It's uh, temporary carpet protection stuff. And it's basically 24 inch wide, thin, sticky film. It's not super, super tacky uh, like duct tape, um, but it, I think it'll do. So that's what this stuff looks like right here. Um, and you can see it's actually kind of thin, um, but it's, it's definitely tacky. And uh, for the materials I chose to build this out of, it's gonna work. So let's take a look at the finished product. Um, this took me about two and a half hours today um, with my buddy Greg helping me out. So that's the finished product. So you can see there's a, there's a roof on there. There's uh, three panels. They're gaffering. They're, they're, I put, put them together with gaffer's tape and, um, and that clear wide 24 inch stuff. So it's really taped together well. I put gaffer's tape along the top edge and along the bottom edge just kind of help the panel stay together. And then for the hinges, I did the tape on the inside and on the outside, on both sides. Okay, hopefully you can see me. So we built this turntable today. Um, the idea is the fan will be on the bottom and the back and the airflow will be going this way. So you're always spraying towards the fan and you can just turn your work, right? And uh, what I like about that table is I can pull it apart, unscrew the pipes, it'll store flat. Um, I've already got the fan here. Just a 20 inch box fan. And I got a filter. And I'll probably just bungee cord the filter across the front. Um, keep the air moving this way. I've got a door over there in my garage. And so what I'll probably do is actually put my sprayer outside so it's got fresh air. So there will be airflow going this way. I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna leave the door wide open, but there'll be airflow going this way. Uh, I'll wear my mask, but all the spray is going to go right under here and right down. Now, if I need to, I could actually put more another panel off this way and another panel off here. I, I don't think I'm going to need to, though, because the work will fit back there. So two and a half hours, 140 bucks. That doesn't include the plywood or the two by fours. I had those, um, but it does include the pipe. It does include the, this uh, wide tape, which is 24 bucks. It includes all these panels. I got inch and a half panels. Um, I would have gone for the pink, rigid, more rigid panels, but they don't come in four foot. Yeah, I'll take my table apart. So, lift it off. Unscrew this. That'll go store flat somewhere. Maybe on this Jigas rack. Unscrew this. Down 
hopefully you can see this or I'm wasting my time. This one goes door flat and it rolls, which is nice. Now don't make fun of me because I'm short. Now, this side folds into the center, right into this pocket. The way I made that pocket was I just ran this through the table saw, cut off a six inch section, then I cut off another inch so it would have a little bit of clearance. And then I glued this six inch section on. It's the same thickness as the panel. And then this, Close, close. Everybody spray booth. I mean, this. I mean, one person can easily carry this around. And then that would go store. Wanted to show you how uh, how flat it stores. So um, I'm storing it behind my joiner here. Let me see if I can get a good angle. But I mean, there it is. It goes up to about the height of the garage door. Uh, six inches deep for all four panels, right? Because they're inch and a half panels. And then. There's the table, just storing flat right there. The pipes are down there too, so uh, it'll be nice because, you know, the way my shop works is my wife parks in here. And so I'll kind of show you what that's like um, when I'm done. Uh, when I'm done woodworking for the day, I'll try and get in a corner here. I clear out this middle bay, or this bay closest to the house. And you can see there's just a ton of stuff packed in there, but. All that stuff is movable. So the Barbie Jeep and the stroller and all that stuff move out. And my new planer and joiner on wheels. And so the shop gets really big um, when I'm woodworking and I can collapse it all down. Uh, I just cleaned up the shop. There's my little rockler. I don't know what they call that vac thing that hooks up your dust collector. But you can see if I go up here, it's pretty packed tight. Um, now I can still get to my bench, which is a freaking mess, and do work. I can do hand work, right? I can get. I can get to the back of my bench. I like, I like working from both sides. Uh, well, that kind of sounded pretty freaky. Uh, it's nice to be able to access your work from either side of the bench. There, that's better. Um, I can still get to my table saw, which is a mess. Um, and if I need to, I'll just move all my stuff, move all that stuff and, and spread out. So it's great that that store is so flat. Hey guys, one point I forgot to mention is that I'm gonna have a fan in the back of that spray booth well, I'm gonna open the garage door. I'm not gonna just blow, uh, blow right into the garage. So I'm gonna have a door open behind me with my sprayer by that door getting fresh air. I'm gonna have the garage door open with the fan taking the air out the garage door. So I'll be spraying into the fan and uh, should be like a garage. It's not a dedicated shop. So I've got my water heater here. I'm not gonna do anything about my water heater. It's a gas water heater, but I'm gonna spray uh, waterborne stuff. I'm not gonna create a cloud of boom boom juice. But uh, this is my furnace and we've replaced the motor on this twice. And I think I might be the culprit of that. So um, this has got a switch, like a master kill switch right there. So when I'm spraying, I'm probably gonna turn the furnace off so the blower's not going, so it's not bringing in anything, creating any other extra airflow. And that way the air will be going right through the shop, right past the work, right out the garage. I've also got a huge, kind of it was kind of expensive, it was a little bit ticked, huge canvas tarp that I'll lay down in here, and I'll lay it down a little bit out into the driveway too, just to protect, uh, protect stuff. And then, you know, gotta make sure there's no cars in the driveway when you spray, so. Anyway, that should be it. I'll splice all this together and give you guys a video update. Have fun.